Good evening everyone, my name is Dave Mobbs from XRite Photo Europe and I'd like to welcome you to our latest webinar, Creating Powerful Images with Mark Lawrence, sponsored by XRite and DxO. We will be taking questions at the end of the webinar, but unfortunately due to time, we not, might not be able to answer all questions. Please use the questions box provided and we'll take a selection of questions for Mark. Before Mark gets underway, let me give you a quick introduction. So Mark Lawrence is a professional photographer that specialises in wedding, fashion and beauty. He is also a dedicated photography tutor, offering a range of courses from lighting techniques to wedding photography workshops. You can find more about Mark at marklawrencephotography.co.uk. About this webinar, this free webinar will look at utilising DxO software for professional image editing and bypassing Lightroom through DxO software. Mark will also discuss the new DxO One camera, explaining how he uses this as part of his photographic workflow. And then Mark will demonstrate the editing of fashion and wedding photography using DxO software. The session will also walk through the software's presets and how to fine tune edited Im images and will feature a demonstration covering the importance and simplicity of colour management. So I'll just pass you on to Mark. Okay, Mark, let me know when you work, you get the request. Yep, I'm, I can hear, I'm just trying to clear something off of, um, oops, what have I done? I've done something wrong there, I think, David. No, that looks fine, I can see your screen now. Right, okay, so here we go. So I'm just going to mute my audio now, Mark. Okay, if you've got okay. any questions or issues, let me know and I'll unmute. Okay, fine, so we're live now. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's well out there. Uh, on this fine sort of winter evening over here in just outside London where it's very cold. Um, my name is Mark Lawrence, I'm a photographer, um, have been for, for more years than I care to remember um, and you can see my screen I hopefully now, you can see that it's just got uh, the DxO software uh, X-Rite webinar uh, for today. Um, a little bit about me, uh, Dave's already introduced, um, i am been a photographer for more years, about 20. Um, I shoot fashion, weddings, and really anything I find interesting. Uh, I class myself as a photographer. I try not to sort of pigeonhole myself um, and say, oh, no, I only do this or I only do that. Um, I'm a photographer and I, I love taking pictures. I am a Nikon user. Uh, personally, I don't think there's any difference between uh, most of the cameras nowadays. Nikon and Canon, both amazing products. Uh, they look after their professional bases very, very well, um, but I've just Nikon because that's what I started with. It's as simple as that. Um, I use Elinchrom lighting. Uh, for location work, I use the Elinchrom uh, Quadras, which are nice, easy battery pack uh, to carry around. I use their, their large lighting stuff in the, in the studio as well. I use a lot of Lasterlite products, as do most people around the world, reflectors. You will see um, in the presentation on DxO one of the, or maybe a couple of the new Lasterlite backgrounds that have just been launched. Uh, we photographed those a couple of weeks ago. I am the UK ambassador for Cactus Speedlights, which are a cheaper version of Speedlight, camera independent actually. So their triggers are transceivers, so they're built-in transmitter and receiver. Um, very much more at the cheaper end of the market. Uh, I use Wacom, I use a Wacom pen and tablet all the time. Um, I can't, I simply can't get on with mice. I've used pen and tablets for, for years since they first came out. Uh, it, for me it's just a natural way of, of, of working around a computer screen. Of course I use x -Rite products, um, on there, I, I use x to cal calibrate my screen, my printer. I have got other products as well from a company called Data Color, but x are my primary, uh, my primary source of calibration. Without that, wow, uh, I don't know what pictures would look like. Uh, we have to calibrate our monitors. Uh, I do mine uh, about once a week. Um, I have a couple of websites. I have the Mark Lawrence 
photography.co.uk. I also have Mark Lawrence Training. .co.uk. Um, I'm at Twitter, at MTL Photography. Um, I try to be sort of uh, serious on Twitter. I try to sort of put out things that I think people might be interested in. Um, I've got a few followers out there, one or two. I think my daughter, my, my wife, that's about it. Uh, I've got a few more than that. Um, moving on, equipment. Um, the computer that I'm using tonight, um, I, I, I'm Apple through and through. If you cut me in half, you'd probably find an Apple core uh, inside me. Um, it's, I've had a custom built Mac by a company called Create.pro. They're based in London uh, and in the east of England, up in Ipswich that way I think. Um, this is running at 3.46 six core Intel processor, 64 gigs of RAM. It was running the NVIDIA GTX 980 graphics card, um, but that went wrong last week and so I've switched over to the normal card on the machine, so please bear with me while the graphics just, go. I mean it, it is very, very fast. Um, I use NEC SpectraView 271 monitors. I'm hoping to change those over to the new system just after Christmas uh, and get, get the new monitors in. And yes, this computer is pretty quick, especially with 64 gigs of RAM, compared to, to, to most computers. Software. Um, I run DxO Optics Pro 10 and love using it. Uh, it's a great, great application, very easy to use. Um, and I'm sure at the end of the presentation or now, if you go to the websites afterwards, you can you can download it. Uh, I think a trial for 30 days free of charge, um, and just sort of sit back and, and try and learn it a little bit more. Um, I use the film pack and, and viewpoint software. Um, I'm not so much on the viewpoint because I don't do a lot of architectural photography, although I have used it sometimes in wedding photography to correct perspective on buildings uh, and things. Um, but the film pack, of course, with the black and white is, is absolutely amazing. Um, I use Adobe CC, the full version. Um, I'm fortunate to be part of uh, the UK Adobe um, ACP, which is the Adobe Creative Professional Group. Uh, I've used Adobe for many, many years. Um, I use Lightroom, Lightroom 6. I, I predominantly use Lightroom for the wedding side of things because of its, its library basis and being able to sort things out, whereas most of the fashion stuff and things is, is DxO um, on there. Um, I use another piece of software called Time Exposure from a company called ProSelect and that does all my presentations for me. Uh, I have to admit, when I bought it, it was about £99. I think if you go buy it now, it's about £700. Um, but they've, they've made a few updates. It's an incredible piece of software, and I do say to studio users, if you're using this software, you will earn your money back in the first couple of months by using it. And I use lots of other little bits of software, as we all do, I think, um, in this industry. We see something that come out with, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, we're going to try that. You know, that'll make my pictures look better. Uh, we'll, we'll try that sort of thing. Um, X-Rite. Um, you know, color management is so critical and so important uh, for photographers or anybody working in graphics. Um, and there's, there's a massively strong relationship between graphics and, and photography, you know, we both, well, we all use both of those things. If we don't have the color correct, if we don't set it up correctly, there's little point in trying to produce something that, that's just not going to look the way that we want it to look. Um, it's such an important part of our workflow and as you can see on the slide there, you know, I, I calibrate once a week. That's probably over the top. Um, you know, I'm probably being a little bit too serious on that, you know. Um, but as I say, what we do is completely and utterly color critical, what we do. Um, I use the little passport system from x -Rite, um, working with Lightroom. So when I go out to a wedding, I will use the passport uh, color chart, photograph that maybe two or three times. If I'm working in the bride's house and then move out to the church, I will photograph them uh, under the lighting conditions and then use those to create my profiles. Uh, we talked about this on the last webinar I did. Um, and uh, it, the passport system is, is a very simple, cheap way, I think it's 70 pounds or something like that. Um, and it will it, it will just enhance what you do. But that, that is sort of going on to that is another webinar on its own because it, it, it's, it's quite a serious thing for us. Um, 
I like the X-Ray stuff because it has both the advanced and the basic menus uh, on there. So each week I'm just using the basic menus and then probably every couple of months I'll go into the advanced um, and tweak. Um, but I, I do think, and talking to uh, people that make monitors, the manufacturers, the, the NECs, the BenQs, um, all these different people, monitors will start to lose their, their color over a period of years. Um, unless they're just trying to sell me more monitors, I don't think so. Um, but I think after sort of three years or something like that, three, three to four years, you really need to change a monitor and make the old monitor your sort of secondary monitor for your menus and things like that. Um, the passport system, uh, just sort of skipping one here, going on to where it says using assistance with different camera systems. If I do go out and shoot a wedding and I have to take other assistants with me, then they will shoot, or they, they may be shooting on Canon, they may be shooting on Nikon, but no two cameras are going to produce the same colors. Uh, no two monitors, if you put them side by side, are going to produce exactly the same, uh, the same colors. Um, so when I'm using an assistant, if they're using Canon, they'll shoot everything, but I will still calibrate everything from the shots that I take with the passport system. So it then pulls everything back into line, back into color for me. Uh, so I've got a, a nice even balance across, uh, across the whole wedding. Um, that's the end of that sort of uh, presentation for you. Um, I'll just, you can see my screen here. I'm just going to quickly see my very, very untidy screen. Um, I'm going to go and open up DxO Optics 10. Um, it's opened up pretty quick. Okay, we've got some images here. So it would be interesting to see um, how many people, I don't know how we can do this, Dave, uh, uh, and people out there and the organizers, um, see how many people are actually using DxO. Um, you know, I'm not the biggest expert on DxO. I'm, I'm here basically to show you how I go through some of my pictures and how I use uh, the software to do what I do. So, um, you know, if it's some of the technical questions, I'm sure we have our technical people on hand to be able to answer some of the more advanced technical questions. Um, but uh, on my screen here, uh, I've got the, uh, the just, just the main screen here. I've got a couple of, Im you know, there's, I don't know, 12 or 15 images along here. Um, and we've got um, a little bit of beauty. We've got some fashion. We've got um, uh, a wedding there, another wedding over here. We've got uh, another little bit of fashion. And then we've got so those two pictures down the bottom. I'll show you those. That's the two new backgrounds from Lasterlight. Um, they come up with these amazing backgrounds. They're really good. We've got some um, DNG images here, um, which were taken with the DX, uh, DX01 camera. I wanted to show some images of a fashion shoot that I did with the DX using the, the DX01. Um, unfortunately, um, due to the copyright issues, I wasn't allowed to use my own images before because they were going to be published. So I, I couldn't use them before. And I think there's a lot of photographers out there that will probably understand uh, where I'm coming from uh, on that. So what we'll do is if we look at, uh, I've got couple of images down here. One I did a little bit of editing on earlier in Photoshop. So here's the, here's the, 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 the main image. Uh, this is uh, one of the young ladies, Tara, um, who I use uh, quite a lot as a model and you can probably see why. Uh, she's a beautiful girl. Um, and in the background there we just use one of the uh, Lasterlite uh, products at the back just to give us, um, use a little gobo to give us a little bit of light around here, different colored light. We, we just, we were mucking around one day, we put some gels in there and, uh, and things. I, I run these events called Play Days, uh, which we're going to start showing a bit more software on the Play Days as well. A Play Day, just, uh, just to give you a brief extra explanation, um, is we set up four different lighting scenarios and we have a computer stuck in the middle. The four different lighting scenarios, we have a couple of different models and I split, I only have a maximum of about 12 people. We split you up into two groups and you go around using the different lighting uh, scenarios and you play. You basically just learn. I'm there as a guide, I help, but I want people to bounce off of each other and things like that. <clears throat> the models enjoy it. We have a great day out and you get to use the kit. So, you know, the frustration for me uh, when I was a photographer, uh, as a younger photographer, is that I used to go to the shows and see the guys up on the stages using the kit uh, and they were saying, look, this is what I can do, I can do, I can do this. 
but I never got a chance to use the kit. It was either too expensive or, you know, I, I couldn't justify buying it. So the play days, we have anything from lighting kits that are 200 pounds up to, you know, 3,000 pounds with a lighting kit. So bear that in mind. Um, so and what I did, I took that image into into Photoshop, and all I did was to just sort of just have a look at um, Tara's face. I just took off a couple of little bits um, that she would thank me for on there. Now, as an image, um, you know, I always leave enough space if I can around an image so that I can crop. Um, I hate the hands. Hands are a photographer's nightmare. Um, you see at weddings and things, they put their arms around each other's shoulders. You see this claw coming over the top. Um, and I'm sure there's a few people giggling out there saying, yep, see that every week. Um, and the, the, the groom puts his arm up and he's, he's I'm actually, I, this is crazy because I'm actually doing these actions in front of the computer. Um, he puts his arm up and sort of lift his jacket up as well over the top. You know, you just have to control people at weddings. But what I did here with Tara, um, if I go into uh, the panel down the side, um, actually, let me stop myself there. Before I go into this panel down the side here, as you can imagine, there are so many different parts of this software in this panel. So the thing to do is I've built one up here, as you can see, it's Mark's palette. If I go to my workspaces at the top here and just say DXO standard, um, it will just change to this here. So you've got the film pack, the viewpoint, geometry, detail, color, light. They've pretty much all got the same uh, drop down here. So you can pick what you want to go into that panel. Um, but I've what I've done with mine is I've just created one. I'll go to uh, Mark's workspace. So we've got Mark's workspace here, or I've got Mark's Mark's palette. Let's go to the workspace. So we've got our workspace, which gives me my histogram. I can see what's going on there. A little bit of red going on. Um, so I've got this here. So all I want to do is I just want a little bit of exposure compensation to this. Um, I just want to pull it up around this sort of area here. I'm just going to just grab this. You'll see where my graphics are just uh, a, a, a wee bit slow with a, without that, that extended graphics card, which is being fixed, by the way. So, um, and I'm just going to pull up a little bit of on there for myself. Now, once I've done that, I tend to shut those shut those down because I know I've done it then. Um, I've I, I don't want to do any more. Otherwise, you've got all these arrows you know, uh, everywhere. It's such an amazing piece of software that gives you so much. Um, Clearview. Now, Clearview, it's one of these things, it's like a, in Lightroom, like a demist, and um, in Photoshop, like their auto contrast and things like that. Um, it's just better. Um, it's just, I, one of the reasons is, you know, I've got that contrast there. It's, the clear view has really sort of looked at the skin tones and things here. Now what I can do is to start to pull that back to where I want it to be uh, on there. So I've got it to almost back down to the end. So I've got this lovely sort of now, it's gone a little bit softer uh, on there for me and it's just making all the difference. So I'll shut that down again on there. Um, I won't go to uh, color contrast. What I can do is a quick um, horizon if I if I want to I can if you just grab the, the the horizon tool here I can straighten her up or you know I can pull her in a little bit more just pull her up I you know, I don't want to lean in back too far because she's just gonna she looks like she's gonna fall over um, so I'm just gonna pull that in there so let's just lifted her a little there um, so we'll shut down the horizon tool on there and then we can go into some style and some toning if we want to we can use portrait uh, we can use landscape we can go into black and white there are so many different areas that we can that we can use I want to go back up to the top here um, I'm gonna slow down a little bit I keep getting told that I go a little bit too fast so I'm gonna slow down um, and we've got our smart lighting um, and just push this lighting a little bit more on the image. So we're going really from this there, pretty sort of dark, flat, contrasty image, um, to something that's a little bit brighter and lifting. You know, my clients will be able to see. I'll probably take that smart lighting down a little bit on there. I, I do 
you know, I do like shadows. Shadows are part of a photograph for me. Um, and you'll see later on when we do black and white that I like black and white. I don't, I, or creamy. I, I don't like greys. Um, Grey is just for doing colour balance with. So that's our first image there that we've sort of mucked around with. Um, and I could, if I wanted to here, just I can just go in and, and crop uh, if, if I want to. I can go in and just push this up because I don't really want that hand in there. So I can pull this down. You know, I can pull pull this down even using her hair like that. If we were going to use this on the side of a, a pack shot or something, uh, they'd want to be able to write some, to put some writing in there or down down the side. Um, and we can just go in and crop and come up with almost a completely different image uh, on there. And she's Tara is looking at everybody. She's looking at me very intensely in this picture. Um, so yeah. So again, we've gone from here to here. Okay, um, I like that image. I like the skin tones. Uh, I like everything that's on there. I mean, you can, you can. I have to admit, um, you, you can get further into this image. Um, you know, uh, it's as sharp as a razor. I must have slipped on that one. Got it in focus. So um, we're going to. I'm going to move on again to the. It was actually the same shoot, um, but this is a very, very simple. Uh, something when you get a simple edit if you like. Now, uh, I am one for trying to do everything in camera if I can. I really, I, I really think that saves us time. You know, years ago when I was shooting film, it was easy. I'd go and shoot. Um, if I was shooting any fashion or anything, I'd have uh, a Polaroid back. I'd get my basic lighting setups, get those right. Then I'd put the, the uh, film backs on my Hasselblads, put those on, um, shoot the pictures, Take the, get my assistant to take the rolls of film out because um, I was useless at it to be honest um, and we'd send those off and I could have a couple of days off I could do some I like you know um, and then the images would come back and all the pictures would come back and I could sit and uh, look at them I don't want to spend all my time um, sitting in front of a computer um, to, just to prove that I'll just nip along to an image here this is an image looking out of my office um, this is my golf course just here so for those of you, anybody's into golf, uh, it takes me six minutes to walk to the first tee. So we'll go back to Tara on there, and now we've got Tara again. Um, this is very, very simple, very simple image, just shot on a set of stairs. Um, all I want to do, you can do this in, in Photoshop if you want to um, on there, um, or you can just come in and just crop down, just crop down slightly, just take that out of there. Push this in slightly. Here we go. Let's just have an unconstrained ratio so we can just take some of this out here. This is the, the sort of perfect size of um, image. And when I'm on my workshops, when I'm talking to people, I'm saying to them, you know, guys, leave something, leave something over here. If you're shooting for a magazine, leave something on this side. Let them be able to do some print. You know, do those images. Make them use your images. Because if they've got another image where uh, they see somebody, another photographer's image, and it's just stuck in the middle, and they've got nowhere to put any writing, nowhere to have clear text, you know, they're probably going to choose yours because they're going to get the picture and they're going to get the text in the side. So if I just if I just crop on that, there's really not a lot I would like to to, to do to this image. I might go in, into um, Photoshop um, and just actually we'll, we'll, that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll just go to export to application here and it'll come up and ask me now you've got all these different applications that you can use um, I stick to just just to Photoshop um, I could go and browse um, I'm gonna I'm gonna export it without any processing export to application finish top of the screen and Photoshop should boot up now okay so I'm just gonna open the image in here it will produce a tiff for me which will go back okay so in Photoshop here I am just going to Sort of zoom in and and uh, I look at Tara here. Put it back and just I'm going to go and use the uh, spot healing brush, tiniest little brush that I can, and just take some of these things out. Here we go. Uh, pretty quick on this. Uh, all the ladies say, Mark, please, you know, retouch me and things like that. It drives me crazy because most of them are actually beautiful girls. And they, they just, you know, oh, please retouch me. Um, so I've just taken, that's all I've done, just taken those out. I'm just going to say save. 
uh, save and it will take it back. DXO webinar, save it as a PSD, actually I'll save it as a TIFF. Uh, here we go, save it as a TIFF, save. And we'll send that back. And then we'll flick back to DXO. Oh, it likes that. Okay, so that's 24.70, that should be on there. Um, I'll just download the profile for the lens. Okay, and we'll go back to this one here where we did our TIFF, got our TIFF. And then we'll go back into the crop because remember I exported it without doing any processing on it at all. So we're just going to go and grab the crop tool. We won't have original. We'll have unconstrained. We'll just pull that down a little on the side. Pull that over so they've got room to put some text in there. And it'll give you the size down here, which is perfect. So if you're working for a magazine and they say, oh, we want it at this size, uh, you know, you can just, uh, you can see the size of the image there. So I'm just going to push this. I'm just going to go into, um, we've got some contrast here. Um, and sorry, here we go. Where have I gone? Hit the wrong button. Contrast. We've got three different types of contrast. We've got a main contrast. We'll just sort of muck around here. So push that really, push that right up and come up with something there. Um, if I take that down, actually, if you just double click on these, it takes you back to the zero, um, which is always a, I think a lot of people are doing that now, but I, I'm pretty sure DXO were one of the first people to do that. Um, if there, any of the developers or technical guys are listening, uh, well done on that one, guys. You've got micro contrast. So if we just come in a little bit on, on the picture, Okay, and just push this micro contrast. It really is just sort of gets into the fine detail uh, of where you want it to be. So we'll come out, we'll move that down again. You can see it's just making a difference into the cheeks. If I double click, take it back to zero, it just drops it down a little bit softer. But I'm just going to push the contrast just a little bit on this. And it's just going to give me a little bit more punch. Her eyes are just punching out a little bit, uh, and her hair. Um, and she's one of the only models I work with that's just all of her natural hair. A lot of them have extensions. Nothing wrong in that, but uh, you know, it's nice to have natural nat natural hair. Um, so that's just you know that that was an easy one. Um, but as I was saying, if I'm shooting, I'm shooting for a specific reason. Um, when I'm giving my workshops, I say to people, you know, I just want you to have maybe four or five images from this shoot today that you're going to go wow you know it's like weddings you know a bride would much rather see three or four stunning bridal portraits than 30 or 40 average ones where you just click the shutter you know we've all been through it I went through it I went through that stage and I had a mentor I, I, had, I had a mentor a guy called Kevin Wilson um, who still uh, I, I go to now and again Kevin Wilson go to kevinwilson.co.uk see some of his wedding images for me probably one of the best wedding photographers globally uh, an amazing photographer um, so you know just beware of how many shots you're taking and and check your camera have a look on the back um, never look on the back I mean whenever you're taking a shot of a model there's no such thing as a bad shot I've had people in workshops where they started they've, they've taken a go oh no I don't like that and the poor model thinks she's done something wrong um, I'm sure I can hear people saying yes you're right Mark and giggling and, and saying yep um, you know we've all done it I learned from that so none, none of us are any different um, so now we'll move on to a, a wedding image um, this is a young lady uh, as you can see <laughs> bold statement there Mark uh, 10 out of 10 for stating the obvious um, her name is Shelby she is the current Miss United Kingdom um, Beautiful girl, very, very natural girl um, in there. This guy, this was actually not a real wedding, okay? So I'm telling the truth. This was a workshop, um, and this was a workshop run by Nikon, um, and a friend of mine asked me to come along and help out on the day. Uh, Mark Seymour, Mark Seymour Photography, asked me to come along, help out on the day, and then I was showing people how to use reflectors and lights, whereas Mark's very much a natural light photographer. This was just using a reflector at the front here, so just popping some light back in from a window that was coming in from the side. Um, but there's not, again, there's not a lot that we really want to do with stuff like this. What you can do on here is just sort of 
add contrast um, and the smart lighting, this little button up here, this DxO smart lighting really does, it makes a massive difference to things. You know, if I turn that off, um, it goes, a, yeah, it's just changed slightly. Um, but if I turn it on, that's just got slight light and it'll look at it, it was slightly overexposed and it, with the slight adjustment that it's just done, it's just pulled the exposure down slightly for me. It's looked at the pixels, it's looked at, it's a bit like um, on a camera where you've got matrix metering and it's looking across everything. Um, I never use matrix metering, I always use center weighted, but um, DxO seems to have looked at every pixel on there in, in a matter of milli, milli, milliseconds and said, actually, do you know what, Mark? We can get the exposure better than you can. And they can, they've done it um, on there. So, but just to show you the exaggerated changes, we've got slight, then we've got medium, which is just darkened down a little bit more, and then we've got strong, okay, which has made a difference again. It's made it a bit harder, made the image a bit harder. You can see a few more sort of freckles on Shelby uh, and things like this on there. Um, or we can go into we can go into custom, um, and we can change our own. Let's just do the correction preview. And we can push the intensity. In there, I'm going to stick to the slight one because I really liked, really like the slight on there. Um, and you know what we can do as well. You can just go down here. I'm going to add a couple of things uh, in here. I'm going to add. Let's go up to, the, to the main palette up here. I'm going to add something that I use when I'm doing presentations for people. I'm going to add frame. Um, so I can go in here and I can just add something like the black and white frame just on there. I'm just going to bring this down so we can see it. Here we go. Okay. So I can print that. I can send that out to print if I want and put that behind a behind a border. Or I can just save it as it is and put it into my presentation. It just looks so much nicer um, than just sending out a normal print. Um, so moving on, moving swiftly on, I'm going to stay on the, on the same day because we had two two models on the same day um, and they decided that they were going to get married um, on the on the same day. We were using uh, an, a, a, an amazing designer's wedding dress. Uh, uh, one of the nicest guys I've ever met, a chap called Ian Stewart and his team and these, see we can do a little bit more work on this now. So we've got the different background here uh, on there, we've got a blue dress, we've got a white dress. So the first thing First thing we're going to, I mean, we can go to the, the white balance. We can say it's as shot, if you like, or we can go and pick a color. We can go and pick one of these whites. Okay, now that's actually brought it back to how the room was. That's the type of lighting that it is. It's much warmer. You know, if I turn that off on there, it's a lot colder. I, I could go into exposure compensation in there. I could do that and just pull up you know, put up the lighting and make it make it plain like that, but it doesn't really do anything for me. So I'm just going to double click that and take it off and I'm going to go up to my white balance, turn my white balance on and there we go. Um, I'm just, I like this sort of orangey, I, a lot of people don't like it. Um, I like it because it, it just gives it a little bit more warmth in there. I am going to use the exposure compensation and I'm just going to brighten, brighten the area up a little bit more in there. So we've got this lovely sort of now we've got this lovely lighting at the background. We've got more light on the girls' faces. So again, we've you know we, we've completely changed changed the image uh, on there. We could you know there's this something we can use the clear view on this as well, which is more like the demist. There we go. Pulls it, makes it a lot more punchy. Um, I think you know sort of taking a break from doing any editing and, and things like that in there. I, th I think you have to be careful about uh, doing lots and lots and lots of editing on these things. Um, DxO put the tools there to help you. Um, they don't necessarily put the tools there and say use this, use this, use this, use this, you know, because you don't need to. They just want you to really just um, use what you need to produce the best image that you can. So this is why you know you could have all of these 
you can have light leak, the moire on there, uh, move, zoom, multi-point color balance, perspective, presets. You can you can have we'll get into presets in a minute. You can have all of this on there. But are you going to use it? I really don't think so. You just need to use what you want to use uh, and what you need to use on there. So now we'll go to a location shot. Um, this is uh, this is actually my goddaughter. Um, uh, wonderful girl, um, not a fashion model. She should be, um, but she's not. She's she's very tall, um, and I'm going to use the, the one that I want to use on here, which we which we've already put on there, is the clear view. So there you go. You can see the difference in the clear view. I'll just turn it off again. Just brightens it up, and wham, clear view just pulls everything back into contrast for me. You can see all the different details. Um, here, let's just let the correction preview get there, and we can get move this down so we can see everything. All the little now, this is where this is ah, here we go. So you can see this is a live uh, a live performance. Um, just let the correction preview catch up. What I want to do in the contrast, when I showed you the contrast, if we punch the contrast in, when you push the micro contrast, you see the coat changing, all the detail. The micro contrast is really pulling up all the detail from the, there. You go, pulling up all the detail uh, from these areas. So when we zoom out, when we go out, you're getting a much, a much better. So here we go. We can use two. We can use. Uh, uh, I don't want a white balance color picker. Take that off. Um, we can go in there. We can use two. So you can see this is the one without as shot. Um, and this is the this is the corrected one. So you can see there's much more contrast, much more contrast in the shot, um, which just gives it a little bit more punch. This one, it's nice, but it's a little bit wishy-washy for, for for my sense. And I know what the I know these jeans were a lot darker on there. Um, so we'll just go back to single view. Now, um, I I shot a wedding a little while ago, and um, they had this. Um, uh, little page boy and a little flower girl, um, and to be honest, you'd have thought it was their wedding. Um, they held hands all day. They were cousins, and they held hands all day. He looked after her all day long, um, and they were. She wanted to give him a little kiss, and I know there's probably people that are going, oh, you know. These are the types of shots that really sort of helped me in my my wedding photography. Ninety times out of a hundred, I don't use an assistant. I do it all myself. Um, I look like a tourist with three or four lenses around my, with three or four cameras around my neck, um, uh, which is why I think I probably need to go to smaller cameras, but that's another matter. Um, so we've got this amazing picture here um, of this this little couple, and of course, as soon as the bride and groom saw this one, they they they, they fell in love with it all. Um, so, but over on the left hand side here, you've got this little preset editor. Okay, now DxO have built some amazing presets okay if you can use a preset use it don't change it for the sake of change you know um, and you can select a dozen images uh, and just click the preset button and it will just go right away through all the images for you and just uh, stylize them the way that it, you're going to get such um, well, I'm looking for such a simple word consistency you're going to get such consistency through your black and whites by using a preset, um, I, I love these uh, black and white presets here. Um, one of my favourites is 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 one called Structured, and you can edit these. Um, if I look down here, um, I've got a new black and white one, um, which is just about to come up there. Here we go. So Structured, you'll see Structured come up here, and I'm just going to say Apply. There we go. Now that really is black and white. Um, there's really not a lot of uh, sort of uh, structures in that, and you can use that. You can change that uh, in in the smart lighting. You can change it in contrast. You can really, I mean, look at the contrast sliders here where they are. You know, um, one one little button that I have on all the time, and that's this one down here, which is called noise reduction. Because um, there's one of the guys that uh, shows some images on here, uh, a chap called Peter Lovelock, 
um, who works for one of the distributors of the of the of the uh, software, and he he does um, motorsport uh, photography, far too fast for me. Um, he does that, um, and he does a demonstration where he'll show you how it takes the noise out from the the cars in you know where he's shooting at such high ISO sometimes to try and get in low light and in rain and everything he does that um, but that, no that noise reduction is really good but this this one here you know do I need to do anything to that preset I'm gonna probably in the back of my head here some people going yes you do and other people go no you don't um, in there you know I can I, I could apply a frame I could apply some style toning um, I could crop it if I wanted to um, I'm just knocking some of these back here um, the other one that we can you know which I haven't used which everybody uh, I, I see overused uh, sometimes in a lot of my images is uh, where have we gone unsharp mask um, we've got unsharp mask and I see that sometimes when I'm judging images or anything I, I, I see it and it's it's I, I look closely at the picture I just see this over sharp image you know um, I'd rather see an image that's not out of focus but you know if it's not 100% but it's got an impact um, and it's got something on it that, that that would suit me down to the ground I'd much rather have that um, on there so you know I can push unsharp mark unsharp mask if I want to but um, we're getting on now we've got about 20 minutes to go so I want to really get on to these two images um, I'll probably use the same black and white on this now this is one of the new backgrounds from last light um, I don't know what it's called they didn't tell me what it's called. I think it might be like winter wonderland or something like that you know um, you have to be really careful when you're lighting these and and the first time I saw these was on the 29th of November and it was the first time I saw them and I had to do a photographic session with them about an hour later um, so I was, and I had nothing set up so um, I learned from this this one here we did this one first um, I'll show you what I learned in, in, a, in a moment but we're going to do some exposure compensation because it definitely needs lifting up um, on there but also I've tried this earlier on today and it actually looks much better with this when it's in black and white so if you apply the black and white image to it that's probably too much let's just go with the dense one that gives it more of a sort of wintry look uh, going across it and it blends into the background a lot better um, rather than being sort of because it was a color image on a, on a black and white background if you like um, so this is Roseanne another model that I use on a regular basis um, one because she's just really funny um, and two she's, she's an amazing model and, and, and can model pretty much anything um, so this is one of the backgrounds but again you know do I need to do a great deal I really don't think I do um, I don't like over edited images uh, the only thing I would have asked her to do is to put a thumbs you know put a thumbs back in because the thumbs look a little bit yeah. um, uh, I could crop it there and cut them off but she'd, she'd notice if I sent her the picture um, the next image which we need this is where I learned um, they produced another image which is an Italian street scene okay now if you put the model in the middle of this it just throws everything out um, I learned from that it just didn't it didn't look right. Now I was at the back of the hall shooting with a 70 to 200, um, and the lights I was using were called uh, called Lycos from a company called well from Manfrotto uh, called Lycos, and they're the little LED panels, um, and you get an app with it. You can control them via the app via Bluetooth. Um, absolutely stunning. I think retail price about 300 pounds. I think in the UK anyway. Um, absolutely superb and they just pack away into a small bag um, they're amazing what I wanted to do here was to sort of show where we've got some light coming in from the back here that behind her there is another one of these lights um, and it's really strange when you start increasing the light levels onto this background it looks because because these are white uh, these lights and the one behind her head it looks when you increase the lighting it looks like they're, they're brightening up um, it's, it's really freaky um, but works really well um, so on here um, I will use uh, for the white balance I'll go and pick a color off of her coat I want it to be a little bit more um, yeah a little bit bluer if you like um, take it down a touch um, because it it looks like a cold evening scene she's got a coat on 
if it was a warm Italian evening, she'd just have a T-shirt, you know, or a sweater or something like that. But it looks more like a cold uh, sort of evening in there. I'm just going to push the, the contrast slightly. Um, I just want to sort of just beef up the background more more so than anything. Here we go. It's just it's just beefed it up. You can actually see. Um, I don't think they'll love me for this, but you can see where they've done some copy brushing down here to do the street bit on there. Um, yeah, I, I spotted that when I when I when I did it. It looked uh, it looked okay. Um, so these are the new street scenes. But again, you know, this one I would leave. I would definitely leave in color. Um, but you've also got up in the presets here. You've got these, you know, portrait and landscape uh, portrait uh, standard. So let's just apply something. Let's just show you what what you can do. There you go. It's just dulled the color slightly. I think that one we can go for bright. Is it a bit more? You know, makes it a little bit brighter. It looks like the light's right on her face, though. Um, I keep using my hands here as gestures, and unfortunately, you can't see them. Um, that's just me being a bit daft. Um, candy colours. Actually, that's not bad. That sort of, you know, gives a bit of a vignette around the bottom. It turns her turns her hands purple and blue here, um, which which isn't quite good. And I've just realised we've got a little bit up there, which which I haven't, which I didn't get the the, the actual scene. Uh, into. Um, what I will do is show you here. Um, this is the the this is taken um, with the DXO1 camera. Um, I just took a picture of the background. What I'm going to do here is we've got this wonderful little thing called Horizon. Okay, so I want to straighten that quickly. So I'm just going to go here. We go. There we go. This is straight as I can see it, maybe you could do a little bit more, but as you see, see these lights, um, if you actually push the exposure compensation, I think they tend to, they tend to get brighter, uh, it's really, really strange, uh, and especially when you've got directional lights on them, so because I was using LEDs, I could sort of adjust the power up and down uh, there, um, and it was just that they were focused on these lights, it just made them go a little bit brighter, a little bit duller. Um, we've now got, I've got a couple of images down here which I'll, I'll just show you. From This is actually from a wedding. Um, this is a police officer. Uh, he's a police officer and uh, she's a paramedic. Uh, fantastic couple. Trying to get them together was an absolute, you know, for meetings was an absolute nightmare because they both work shifts. So I just hope if I ever get stopped by the police, I hope it's him. Um, he might let me off. So. We've got smart lighting on here um, again, which I've used on there. I'm going to turn the, the 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 smart lighting off, so it hasn't really made a great deal of difference on there. Um, I don't need to adjust the exposure compensation, apart from maybe just take it down slightly, just to give it a little bit more of a mood in there. Again, this was shot at the end of October on a horrible, wet, windy, miserable day. Um, but I love my 70 to 200 uh, lens. It really does help uh, when when I'm you know shooting these. Lovely, trying to get the background out of focus. Uh, the venue made a difference. There was a beautiful venue uh, in there. We are lucky, I think, wedding photographers in getting some some beautiful venues around around Europe, around the UK. You know, I've been to a few in Europe, and and uh, they're, they're all fantastic. Uh, all the people are great. Um, but something something like this, so you could frame something like this for. Uh, for a couple, but I'm going to just push this. I just want to darken this. I just want to get a push a bit more contrast into this. Um, Hi, Mark. Are, are so, we okay to go to Q and A in about five? Uh, more, yeah, you can go to Q and A really whenever you want. I've done a lot of these. You know, there's there's that image, and I've got uh, the other image as well. That's. Okay. That, I mean, basically, that's it. We're there, really. We can go to Q and A whenever you like. Okay, so if we go to Q and A about five to seven, if that's okay. Yeah, okay, that gives me about five minutes then. Brilliant, thanks. Perfect. Okay, right, so we're going to do Q&A in about five minutes. Um, I'm just going to push the contrast on this one again, just going to turn it on, push the contrast, just to give me a little bit more punch in the picture, in the colours. Uh, there they go, coming up. Um, she was actually, you know, one of the brides that we really loved. She was a bit naughty, um, liked to sort of muck around during the day. Hey, it's her day. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil anything uh, for her. Um, 
So I wouldn't really do a great deal on it. I think, you know, you've seen from the webinar that I don't do a great deal on the images. Um, I am one of the few that still use a light meter, which is why I don't need to do a lot of exposure compensation. Um, I go out there, I'll use a light meter, and I'll trust my Sekonic 358. I will trust it, you know, uh, with lighting, with natural lighting, with LED lighting. Um, I haven't, all the images that you've seen down here are the basic raw images. I haven't retouched any of them apart from what we've done this evening. Um, that's how they are. Um, and, and I think you, you really have to sort of concentrate on getting it right in camera and then using something like DX, DXO Optics Pro, um, using that to just enhance those couple of bits. Uh, if you, I don't know how many people out there worked in a dark room. Um, and when you're in a dark room, you just want to get the best image you can outside and then pull it into the dark room and just add some little bits onto it. One of the things I don't do, I don't do a lot of um, vignetting uh, around you. I don't like to, I, I like to see the whole sort of image, uh, the whole sort of image on there. Um, and it, I think the vignetting sort of, you, you're trying to push people towards, you're trying to push people towards the, the, the subject in there, whereas they should go there naturally, you know. And the only thing that really pulls me away from this picture is this post here. You know, I may well take that into, I could take that into Photoshop and get rid of that uh, relatively easily. Um, or if I'm absolutely honest, I could give it to my daughter to do because she's far better at Photoshop than I am. Um, so, you know, something like that, I might push some unsharp mask in there as well, just to crisp up some of these edges around it because it was, I think, um, if I look, uh, if I look at the camera, the, the camera bits, I, I think the camera details, I'm pretty certain that that was shot at something like, that was shot on a D3 or D3X, D3X I think, no, it was shot on a D3, um, the D3X ones are here, uh, it was shot on a D3 at about 1600 ISO with 2.8 with a 70 to 200 um, on a very dull as dishwater day. Um, so, you know, please get the um, the Q and A questions coming. I'm probably ready for Q and A now, uh, Mark. Uh, ready to do that. I think I've sort of bored people long enough. Um, and <laughs> uh, I'd love to I'd love to answer some questions. Um, give somebody else a chance to talk. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, thanks very much for that, Mark. That was a great presentation. Okay. Um, we only have a few questions. Um, we have a question from Stephen. He's basically asking, what does DxO need, NEF or DNG? Um, it, I, I don't, it doesn't matter. Um, I use both. You can see them on there. Um, I use both, and I can take both in and out of Photoshop, pull them back as TIFFs, and, and, and work with them. NEF, it really doesn't matter. Okay, great. Uh, we have a question from Martin. It's just asking, really, what camera you use. Okay, uh, Martin, I use, as I said earlier, I've been a Nikon user. Um, I've got two D3s, which are probably taking about a million shots each. Um, I've got two D3s, and I've got a D3X. Um, D3X, not really the best for outside shots, um, because you can't really push it above 400 ISO. It's a studio camera, um, but, the, you know, it's 24 megapixels, but the, the, it's, it's not necessarily about the cameras, it's about the lenses. Um, and so I tend to use my 70 to 200, uh, 28, the fast one, and a 2470 uh, on there, and an 85 1.4. That's that's my kit. That's that's what I have on those three cameras. Okay, thanks for that. So another question from Stephen. He he basically says that he uses Lightroom as his main platform. How can okay. he how can he manage this DxO and Photoshop? So I think the oh right. Really is is we did that earlier. buying it with 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 DxO and Photoshop, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I did. I think you covered that earlier, didn't you? Yeah, I, t I mean, I can do that really, really quickly now. I can take a picture. Um, you know, when I said one of these one of these pictures here, the one that really annoys me, this one here, but with this little bit down the side here. Um, if I take the the, the color picker off, um, I can take that really, really quickly uh, from export to application into Photoshop. There you go. 
um, I can open the image in Photoshop. I've taken it through without any processing, so we haven't got any of that contrast stuff in there. Um, I could then go to the copy brush really quickly, you know, and, and as people know there, um, I can just start to copy out uh, some of this stuff on here. Uh, my daughter is far, far better at this than me. She has a much more articulate eye. Um, but we're taking that out. I'm just going to take that bit out. We'll so we'll leave that in there so we can see it, and then just click save. Save it as a P. Save it as a TIFF or a PSD. Doesn't matter. Really like TIFF is better. Save as a TF, TIFF. <coughs> okay. And when we come back to DXO, we've got another image tagged onto the end, which is the TIFF file. And there it is with half of that missing. So it's dead easy to go backwards and forwards, same as it is with Lightroom and Photoshop. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. So that's all the questions we have. Mark, so oh, wow. I'm going to take people to the uh, to our special offers that we've got for this webinar. I'll just check yeah. the screen one second. Okay, can you see that, Mark? Uh, I will be able to. I'll okay. move that down. All oh, right. Okay. Okay. So we have some very good offers at the moment from X-Rite and DxO. Um, X-Rite are offering the R1 Display Pro Calibrator with 15% off the Adobe Creative Cloud Photography subscription, and that's 20% off just purely for this webinar. We're also offering 20% wow. off on the Killer Checker Passport. Um, these offers are valid for seven days, so you would need to go to xrightphoto.eu and use code xright20. So I will be putting this offer onto the um, confirmation email that you'll receive following this webinar which will be tomorrow. We also have some great offers from DxO, which they're running all month, which is 50% off all DxO software. That's the, amazing. <laughs> yeah, that is very good. Um, so if you are thinking about getting DxO software, I think now is an ideal time to buy it. And, and this is, you can get this at shop.dxo.com. Okay, so as we didn't have as many questions as uh, we thought, I'd just like to thank Mark for the great presentation and also thank everyone for watching. Really hope you enjoy the webinar and uh, we'll also be uploading a recording of this webinar, uh, which you'll receive by email tomorrow. So okay. thanks again, yeah. Mark, and thanks very that's much. Right. Just one, that's all right. Just, just one thing. I think if people out there can still hear me, um, you know, you saw my email address and things earlier on. Please, if you have any questions, please just drop me a line. Drop me a line. I'll be more than happy to answer questions. No problem at all. Yeah, I'll just take them through that email address. It's marklawrencephotography.co.uk. Yeah, that's that's the web address, and you just drop me an email there. That'd be great. Perfect. Well, thanks very much for your time, Mark, and thanks everyone for oh, watching. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Cheers.